think that's mm-hmm. key. That's what everybody should always mention. No matter how hard it is right now for you, just keep on going. You will see that you will automatically, if you are in this path of trading, for instance, or no matter what you're doing, you will attract the necessary things. Not just ignore mm-hmm. things and say, no, you're already the best. Go and try always to get on the next level. Hello everyone and welcome back to another TFT interview. Today I'm joined by Darius who comes from Austria. Welcome Darius. Hello. Hey. Thanks for having me here. It's my pleasure. So can you first tell us a little bit about yourself and what got you into training? Yeah, sure. So actually like I'm training right now around four years and Mm -hmm. yeah, I got introduced in a way which maybe is right now more popular. So it was through network marketing there was that one guy in our town who had just wrote me a message about yeah do you want to build like your own business and all this kind of stuff and yeah i got introduced by him into that one network marketing company and then i started actually the classic way with yeah trading those signals getting that poor education with support resistance which actually didn't lead us to make any profits at all so it was just at the end me trying to figure out how it works that was what led me to make profits at the end yeah i understand uh can you tell us a little bit about the learning process so you started with this network marketing company uh did you have a mentor after that did you join communities or you learned everything by yourself how was like the process of finding a strategy or a model that suits you did you um, develop it yourself or it's something that you received from a mentor yeah so actually it was like this because of that one network marketing company i had like a bunch of friends of mine or very close friends who Mm -hmm. joined the same network and we started making money the thing was like, um, I copied these signals. I made like in one single day out of $600 or euros, I made like 300. That was like crazy. I mean, it was just pressing one, two buttons and like yeah, I made these 50%. <laughs> yeah, it was yeah. quite unbelievable. But right now I know exactly why I made these profits because I just catched a gold straight with mm-hmm. 200 pips. And mm-hmm. I used a very reduced lot size. And of course, you're making $300 on that. That so makes now sense. But at that time, I didn't know that. And in my euphoria, I just told my whole friends about that, about that opportunity and all these things. Everybody joined us. And I also made quite good money at that time. So I don't know how I figured it out at that time because I copied a lot of different signals and I like made my own type of analysis without having like good knowledge about it. But I turned like from $1,000 into 18000 in just three weeks. This has been risk management. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy risk <laughs> management. <laughs> yeah, that was like not really a good risk management. <laughs> but yeah, I, I blowed up the whole account then in just two days. And all my friends, they, they joined me after I made that money. Mm-hmm. And they've been losing with me together when I lost these 18000 It was like a very bad feeling for me because i was practically selling something which didn't work so Mm -hmm. i tried a way to improve that one skill and i had one friend who was like very close to me and we traded like almost every day to figure out things and like we discuss supply demand and we believed like okay that is something new because the concept behind it was pretty good at the end Mm -hmm. we understood that there are retailers or there are like that money in the market where people are a little bit dummy and mm-hmm. you're just participating after they've lost the money or while they're about to lose their money and you're just practically trading against them so you're looking for liquidity that was like one of the first concepts that like we discovered of course with many different mentorships that we had at that time that led me making again quite a big money at that time don't ask me again how i made it but i was like from 1000 into 30000 in just one month again i've lost it in one and a half days cuz i went like for 100k with that mm. one account but you know you, i've lo- i've used like, like i don't know 20 lots just on gold and that mm. was way too big gold exhausted me at that time yeah and then like i think every trader has that one phase afterwards like you're super depressed because you've lost so much yeah. money yeah. you're you're not getting like a results based of your strategy you don't know why you made the money so for mm-hmm. some reasons you made the money and that was like for me at that moment yeah maybe it works or like i've experienced that forex trading works because 
that's maybe the point where many people don't have their belief belief anymore in in the, the whole industry and then i just started again f- like like from scratch and then i just got in many different mentorships mm-hmm. i came across smart money concept and so on of course all the smart money concept like it had short-term success then again, you're trying to go for these one to twenties, one to thirties risk rewards, which obviously doesn't work. I mean, maybe Being works there. one time. <laughs> it's like whenever I like I capitalize on a one to twenty, it was never in my life like a one to twenty because the risk management behind it was a total different one because you lose one, two, three trades, and then automatically you're reducing your lot size. Maybe sometimes you're increasing it, but exactly then when you got that correct trade, it's the moment. When uh, you have reduced lot size, so your 120 is maybe just a one to three, something mm-hmm. like that. And that was also like a big part, like I understood, okay, smart money concept personally for me doesn't really work. It's more than likely more marketing from my point of view, because people like, yeah, just want to sell something. And if you want to sell something, it needs to be something crazy. Yeah. It needs to be something where you can make like sound money. good yeah it needs to sound good it doesn't mm. need to work good just to sound good <laughs> yeah <laughs> so yeah it's like the process at the end right and then then just started to like figure out things then also me like i came across ict concepts but like not the real concepts itself because i just watched like a few videos and um i just watched like two three videos of him about like the the kill zones and so on like yeah. the order blocks and so on and yeah, it was a quite interesting perspective to it, but still I didn't like had that on one feeling, okay, that's it. That's mm-hmm. a strategy for me. So I just like started more back testing and so on and you're like in that process. Then like I figured out a way with just targeting obviously the whole time the liquidity mm-hmm. from retailers. And right now, like I know that's also at the end just marketing, like like those traders who say your entries might establish or something yeah, like that. Yeah. It's like again, just just so much, so much uh marketing. So uh obviously it's like you have so many participants in the market that it's irrelevant what you do at the end. It's just a psychology game that you just need to follow your set of rules which you back test and then it works. And that was like maybe also kind of a big learning that I had during that journey. But at the end, like I stuck into liquidity trading, trading like also order blocks with imbalances, understanding when you need to trade order blocks, when these are trap areas, when equal lows are liquidity and when when liquid equal lows are not liquidity. Because mm-hmm. that's like one of the biggest issues people are always trying to say, okay, this is always like that. Like whenever you see an order block, it's tradable. And that's like when I totally disagree because SMC traders do have three, four order blocks on the charts and then they just trade all of them or just pick one of them and they never know exactly why they need to choose that one. And my key was like, I always wanted to understand why specifically that one order block, that is like kind kind of my way of trading right now that I discovered a way to know exactly why certain order blocks to have understanding for for the price moment yeah so like candle for candle should be for me everything you need to understand it if you don't understand it it's like confusing you like you have always a big question mark that was like i think it's one of the biggest problems in trading in general because people are trading something they make losses and then they do not really know why that was a stopless set because it's easy to say yeah i didn't follow my plan Thing you should know exactly why market is doing certain things why is it sweeping right now the high and why is it not doing the next time and mm-hmm. having that knowledge with time getting experience you will like totally relate everything that you see on the chart and you're of course going to make failures I still mm-hmm. make a lot of failures but it's like the process that just needs time until you're like figuring out that you can make even crazier profits. So the beginning of the story was not definitely something that uh, I went through. I haven't been flipping accounts like <laughs> like you at the beginning. <laughs> but when you started with the SMC, co- like uh, smart money concepts, I definitely went through this path. So I totally understand what you're t- like talking about when it comes to like just marketing and people saying that, Oh, retail traders would do this, but uh, we do that. I mean, come on, you are also retail traders. What are you talking about? <laughs> are you in a are you working in a bank? <laughs> it is definitely marketing and, and it's good that you mentioned it because I, I want to make audience that are watching this video aware of what is realistic and what is not realistic. So can you tell us like uh, how did you kind of 
re what was the aha moment for you? What was the eye-opening moment for you when you mentioned that you found your edge after like um, watching ICT, but it was not like really ICT, right? It was you found your edge by backtesting some of the concepts. Yeah. So like, for instance, I think we all know like inducements, right? Yeah. So it's like very popular word for quite a bit. And that was like also like people really believe that that is the holy grail. Like, hey, you're using inducements, you're using SET concepts, you're combining all of these and then you are like, magic. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, everything is magic and sound. And then you just realize it's not magic at the end. It's just the hot work putting it to really understand that. So yeah. for me, like the real aha moment was to understand that all these concepts that do exist, they all have definitely a relevance, but you need to know when they are relevant right now for yeah. the charts. You can obviously see all these patterns the whole time, but you need to know exactly why sometimes that pattern happened, then the other one, then the mm -hmm. other one. So for me, it's like that. The whole chart is like constructed in a way that it is super relevant to like the banks. There are definitely banks who are moving their price and so on. But I think yeah. it's like also not many believe it's JP Morgan. They believe it's like all these crazy big banks. But I just found out different things about that, that it's not really those banks who are doing it because they just mm -hmm. have the liquidity. They just put the money in it. There is a certain algo which Etienne moves the way it moves. I truly believe that this is an algo which is programmed where the banks at the end just decide to put money in it and mm -hmm. the algo then just makes its thing. So he pushed price up, down, up, down, creating imbalances, creating liquidity, and then it decides where it needs to go. And when you find out why that day works like this, when it's going to sweep, for instance, daily high, daily low, weekly high, weekly low, all these like, like standard stuff, which people like probably do not really think about it. But when you realize when these things happen, you will get the aha moment. And this will not come like from one day to, to another one. You of just course. need to really practice a lot. Like even though like the, for me, there are so many variations that through the memory effect, you will have days where you are on the charts and you know for a hundred percent, this thing is going to go that one direction. That's like also for me personally, when I like uh, even increase my risk, because I got the confidence level because I know my strategy. I know the situation that happens and you just recognize it at that moment. And then you go just not all in, of course, but yeah. you just go with risk at that day. And that's like also probably quite good if you go like have a good risk management behind that to know when you can ri uh, risk, risk more. more in, yeah. Uh, so actually like knowing your A plus setups, the setups exactly. that have the highest probability. And this is actually exactly what ICT is teaching about, about the algorithm, um, yeah. inter interbank price delivery algorithm. That's how yeah, yeah, exactly. it. it's good that you mentioned that it takes time because many people are in the rush. So let's talk a little bit about the biggest failures that you cherish the most that taught you like the biggest lessons yeah so like the first one was which i already mentioned that one where i lost like the Eating. second time the big amount that i made yeah uh, that's like yeah leading to big depression at that moment but same like when for instance also me like sometimes i lose funded accounts and so on it's like maybe at that point point like like i know already that i'm going for that trade with a higher risk and i'm ready to like potentially even lose that account because you just go buy another challenge pass it one more time uh it's just like the same process you will still get a lot of learnings just by going through this process many many times so for me in general like i only started with prop firms this year because mm -hmm. i had like a very bad experience in the past with one prop firm which i think many know and since then i like never wanted to attend any prop firms anymore but mm -hmm. at, like since beginning of this year i went Full, like I, I'm using a lot of prop firms was yeah. the funny trigger so whenever like I made these challenges and I failed these challenges or when I failed or I like I lost funded accounts it's like every single time it hurts right yeah. you have like the, of course. The, of course. the pain <laughs> and I think you need to go through these pains multiple times because only then you're like really going to learn out of that you just mm. should have like a good risk management with your money. So money management from my point of view, like you should not always buy the highest accounts if you can't afford it. If you can't afford it, like for instance, you make payout of 20,000 20, and then you are losing a $1,000 challenge, which is like absolutely nothing in, if you compare it. You should like have that sort of risk management behind every problem that you are from my point of view, like going through all these 
losses and so on with time will be beneficial for you because you are like still going at the end you just need to just keep on going because no matter how hard it is right now okay you you're probably many can relate like you have faces where your strategy does not work it's like i don't know like you have sometimes that face where like you you're going into trade and for whatever reason you're always wrong and experience that like very often in the past right now like i don't know since i'm trading this type of strategy i don't have that that much but also have sometimes like okay why am i that loss but i recognize it immediately why i made these losses and that's kind of frustrating because you know it's your fault so it's yeah. like every single time it's your fault and i think that's quite important that you also acknowledge that that it's your fault because you cannot say hey uh the weather was not good so of course uh didn't make problems <laughs> today or i don't know my girlfriend is here and uh she is making noise right now and that's why i lost the trade or family yeah. members i don't know it's, it's always like this so you should always understand that the responsibility is you mm -hmm. and by acknowledging that that will give you power it's not going like you should not give that power away to someone else say hey it's his fault or whatever it's always your fault acknowledging that will give you more power and i think that is the way to go because you like acknowledge that then you have the pain it, it's frustrating and then you still decide to stand up so that's strong and that will make you mentally stronger on the way and that may take time for some they need to blow hundreds of challenges some need to blow thousands of challenges until they really get the consistency it's really uh, like everything that you mentioned is just so amazing and it's really good that you mentioned that if you are profitable you should not people that haven't uh, got to that stage yet they think as soon as you become profitable you make profits all the time <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like i get the questions like how much do you make every month and i'm like every month is different like <laughs> so you mentioned uh, mental strength and you said like that you have to like go through everything in order to build this mental strength how did you work on your psychology like to improve your psychology because i know that every single trader start, starts with a different mindset and you have to work to improve your mindset and way of thinking in order to become profitable. Can you tell us a little bit about how you made this transition from having the bad mindset to like having this realization and now being in the zone and uh, trading properly? Yeah. So basically, actually, you should like not put like 100% into trading from my point of view. Mm -hmm. So many people believe they need to go like all in in trading. And that's totally fine if you do. But you should like not let your mood at the end depend on the results that you make yeah. that's something which i also went through many many times like you make crazy profits you are hyped you're jumping in the room because you made your i don't know your first ten thousand dollars in just one trade which is crazy of course mm -hmm. but like the next moment you can lose ten thousand dollars as well depending on your risk management and how you're doing that so from my point of view, how I re or how I'm dealing with that is I want to have other things in my life, like not only trading, like for instance, going to the gym is a perfect thing to do because let's say you didn't perform too well in trading. Mm -hmm. Then you still have like something in your mind, which makes you excited to say, okay, yeah, but I'm going to go to the gym. I'm going to hit my new PR or mm -hmm. you're going to make a new record in training, uh, in training as well, not only on trading. So that is like the, the thing when you're like making losses mm -hmm. that you still have a good mood and having that good mood, mood later on while backtesting and reflect, reflecting your losses, that's going to be beneficial to you because yeah. many do it like this. They start trading, they make losses on that day, then their whole mood is crap. They are laying in the bed, they're eating junk food, they're watching Netflix, and then they're trying to backtest, and then they are doubting the whole strategy. Then they see that one mentor on Instagram, and then the next course and mentorship is already bought. Yeah. So that's not the way to go. So you should like really at the end, it's a psychology game itself. So you need to master it by your own. And I think that having this diversity in your life, like hanging out with friends, if you had like a, a bad day, it's okay because, you know, the next day you're going to make it back. So have like these good emotions. So connect yourself with positivity and not with negativity. And that's what will automatically, like you mentioned before, it's good for your brain to see the positivity in trading as well. Because mm -hmm. the moment where you're just 
reflecting on that and you just view the negativity automatically your trading results are going to be negative so it's like the law of attraction at the end mm -hmm. the way and how you do it now in your brain is a different thing but at the end you're attracting things and you see what you want to see so if you want to buy you see the buy setup if you want to sell you see that sell setup but what is right now the true one will it go up or down that's when you're like in that kind of state of negativity more than likely will result in that negative result so always for me when i'm in that state of losing more than likely i stay stuck sometimes like if you have a bit bigger strike of of losing you 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 need to do something else not looking too much in trading maybe back testing is okay but not really like live trading because you would just absorb this negativity, put it into trading and your results are going to be even crazier or bad. Yeah. And that's not the way to do. So just try to do our things from my point of view as well. So it kind of um, sounds like the more you repeat the bad habits, the more bad habits you get. And the more you repeat the good habits, the more good habits you, you have. So it's very important to analyze and be aware of what we are repeating because what we are repeating is what is going to be developed and what is going to improve if we repeat the bad habits the bad habits are going to improve if we repeat the good habits the good habits are going to improve so would you like to actually share your screen and show us a little bit about uh, all your strategy like how you analyze yeah. the charts and an example of yeah, I mean, that, I just just want to mention one thing because of mm -hmm. that one with the bad habits the thing is like for instance since I did it at that time, trading like from a thousand to thirty thousand, I've never done this anymore since then. Like I was like always scared because I've had that bad experience, and that's like also like super bad because you need to do it. And recently, like I think a month ago or something, I started again with a small trading account. I don't know, it was like three thousand dollar, and mm -hmm. I turned it in twenty thousand in just one week. Mm -hmm. And it was like pure psychology for me because I was scared. But I had done that feeling on that day. I said, hey, it's going to work because it's all mindset. Of mm -hmm. course, I used higher risk and all these things, but it's just mindset. Same like with trading gold, for instance. Gold exhausted me like multiple times in the past. And I was scared trading mm -hmm. gold. And then yesterday, for instance, I did took one of my be best trades trading gold because it was obviously pretty clean setup. But it was also for me like I had that feeling because it was something in the past and Maybe you with your mind or your your current present, you can't realize that, but your subconscious mind is going to absorb all of all of these things and it will get remembered. The thing is like with trading and when you're like back testing and you have this positivity and you see these examples, your subconscious mind is always telling you what to do. And that's like also for me when it comes to the trading decisions, very often it's like this, like I'm on autopilot. I just do it because I just like, feel it and it's not like hey you're not following your rule your rules or, or all these things of course you're following you make your analysis but at the end the right decision now it's definitely along for the session or for the day or whatever you're looking for it's your subconscious mind which is telling you because they know already examples and this so is that's... called unconscious competence <laughs> okay <laughs> this is yeah this is the last stage that a trader can achieve and like just improve from there so there, are, I, I actually I talked about this in one reel that we posted like last week, like all the five stages that uh, uh, every single trader is going through. So this that you just mentioned, this is the unconscious competence. Before this stage, there is a conscious competence where you have to be aware and consciously take the decision uh, for a trade. But when you have done it like so many times, repeat it so many times, your subconscious mind has already absorbed this picture. It has absorbed this pattern and you don't have to activate your brain and consciously think about it, but it just comes automatically, which is also called intuition. You build intuition for the movement of, of the, the pair or the pattern that you're uh, trading. And before we jump into the charts, now when we already mentioned uh, more a little bit about like mindset and psychology, do you have a daily routine that you're sticking to or like something that is helping you to, to be focused and calm. Exactly. So I think that's super important. So definitely have a morning routine. Like you get up for me, usually it's 30 minutes before the Frankfurt session starts because yeah. I want to 
back to Frankfurt session. I'm not like getting up too much earlier because it's like for me, I don't want to have the, this distraction in the morning. Like maybe if you go to the gym and so on, I just felt this is for me distracting me, like getting power from me. And I want to have 100% full focus and full energy into my first setups that I'm taking. And yeah. usually that's also why Frankfurt session works so good for me. Same with London session. And that's why New York for me is only optional. So I just got up, drink a liter of water, then I wait around one and a half hours to drink my first coffee to boost my energy. So not drinking coffee right, right at the morning because that's like decreasing your energy because something works with your body. Can't explain it right now. So that's why it works definitely. And yeah, so I'm just trading then basically the Frankfurt session and the London session and the New York session. I'm like only optional because I have less power at that moment. I go also afterwards to the gym. And then it's like New York is like, yeah, you don't really need to do that anymore. If I see the setups, which I really like, and I have again that moment, yeah, it, it's good to take it right now, a trade. Then I trade it. So I definitely give it a check, but I'm not really actively trading New York session every single day. So it's about realizing your weaknesses and strengths. So you have figured out that this works for you and you're yeah. using your strength to improve your exactly. performance. Amazing. Uh, okay, let's hop on the charts now and uh, check a little yep. bit the technical side. So, for instance, here I'm trading more than likely every single day the GBPUSD, focusing actually on my strengths. Uh, it's, I have very good results trading only that pair. I want to relate candle by candle. For me, that's quite frustrating if I know I have three pairs that I need to look after. So I'm just choosing to pick one single pair. Sometimes optional for me is gold and also EURUSD, but more than likely always GBPUSD. For instance, on the GBPUSD, it's quite frustrating because I've seen price moving that much to the upside. That's mm -hmm. also kind of a hard uh, thing sometimes if you know what will happen, but you know you can't really participate in because market is going to be cheeky to you and it's going to stop you out or you're like... From a mindset perspective, you're not ready to hold the trade for seven or 800 pips, something like that. Um, yeah, so basically what I see here on the GBPUSD and also from a long-term perspective, I see it going crazy to the upside. We are currently here at this order block, which from my point of view, I can see that already is a trap order block. Trap order block doesn't mean for me that price will not um, go from here to the downside. As you can see, it definitely gave you a huge right. reaction, retracement. Uh, it may even go even more to the downside. It's definitely a possibility. I just view it more bullish because I know where the next target is. The next target is going to be this. Now, if price will like come first lower and then higher, that's something which I can like say upfront. Because mm -hmm. I'm always playing the reaction. So I'm also not trying to predict the market or something like that. But from a higher time frame, from the monthly, weekly, and so on, it's actually already planned that this is the next target. I always do it like with a liquidity base. So for me, if this is the target, automatically the next target will be this, and then it will be this. And if it will reach that level, of course, at these levels, you will see retracements. You will see even a longer time period of price consolidating, going lower and all these things. 100%. Mm -hmm. But it's like, I do very often these kind of assumptions also in the lower time frames, And that's how I can like maximize my wins because price will go very often, like in just a few candles to the upside. So mm -hmm. that's not what you can do on a higher time frame, of course. So basically right now, price on GBPUSD made a push to the upside into this, from my point of view, trap order block, trap supply zone, and reacted pretty heavily from there. You can also see how price here swept this candle to grab more liquidity went down sweeping this going lower and now going down to fill here some form of imbalance okay so i filled here a form of imbalance or order block i'm just trying to follow always like an efficient market for me everything looks till this point efficient you got this area and for me like from this higher time for perspective perspective right now i have the option that price will like move from here to the upside as well as coming down lower, just sweeping this liquidity, if this is liquidity, this is liquidity, and then it will go down lower, a uh, higher. So like, mm. this is an option or already from here. So right now we are into this area where you swap liquidity. You see here a nice imbalance. Mm -hmm. If price will push here, it will be balanced market. This will be definitely, or this area here in general, and that's exactly where SMC traders will always look for trades, like for many of them like at this week, or I don't know. 
Mm. This is going to be a trap. Like, like very often, that's like the, the, the concepts like I'm doing. You can see it here pretty good. That was like the trap in the past. So many want to trade off of the extremes. For me, the extremes are super dangerous. You need to know mm. when to trade the extremes. But like in an area like this, you see price pushing up, going down, balancing here something, tapping into this demand area, coming up higher from the start. This was an area of trap. And then price give you reaction and continues to go and target the next high. Same like here, same kind of process can be repeatable. The thing is just why I'm not 100% confident about this is uh, I just, I'm not aware of this kind of situation, how the candles look look, look here. So that's mm -hmm. like also when I have like uh, sometimes problems with my strategy or with having a high win rate is because I don't know certain scenarios that well as I haven't experienced them. Mm -hmm. Especially in a higher time frame, uh, when the daily and the four hour are in a in a specific stage, I experienced that already. That I make sometimes failures because I was unable to recognize specific manipulations, which I can do in a lower time frame. But because of the thing that it is on a time frame where you need like weeks or months to experience mm -hmm. that, it will take like one two years to go through the stage when you are aware of the scenarios as well. And yeah. that's like, but it's, it's really good that you are aware that you are not so aware and so familiar with this pattern. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you you can. should always be reflectable and understand why you're making these losses. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, how would you improve yourself? It's like, uh, I'm looking like really for that holy grail, like everybody's telling, like, I want to relate everything for me. It doesn't matter if I'm able to trade it every day like this, but I want to relate it. And therefore to always have my answers to my questions that I have. Because then that, that's like, I don't know, like you have a math calculation, one plus one is two. There is not like, I don't know. That's like confusing if you sometimes know that two plus four is six. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's not six. It's like, boom, exploding in my mind. So yeah, so currently like uh, that was a pretty nice opportunity from here, for instance. We've mm -hmm. seen price moving to the upside after tapping into here. This whole thing is for me considered as liquidity. Like also for me, I just mentioned this because the above ones are liquidity. You see price taps and liquidity. Again, tapping from there in some form of order block, order block trap. And that there you can see like price push down, grab liquidity, reaction, balancing something here in the lower time frame. Like another demand zone. It's like basically everything goes from demand to demand. And then from here, pushing up higher into this, price is going to go up. So you see like these kind of accumulations sometimes. So here, mm -hmm. that's like, I think many will say that's a whack of accumulation. Yeah, but everything is like, you can see it's providing yeah. your everything. It's giving you the reactions. You should just know that like in this case here, it's a short. And that's like, for instance, a short trade that I did took at that day. Mm -hmm. But I also was aware of you need to close it because price won't go and take the low because the low was already this one, which formed mm -hmm. that price will make the break. Like here, I really like this example right now because that's where people are like always super confused because they see like price order block, respecting it, going down lower and lower. And then the moment when it taps here, yes, it sweeps here something, which can be like your first target if you take the short from the top. Yeah. But what you should be aware of is that this is actually exactly giving you the liquidity that this one works. So trying to understand when something is liquidity and when something is not liquidity is ac actually like yeah, the, the game changer was for me the game changer. So for me, like I'm never looking at market structure itself. I consider market structure as my context. Like, okay, this is what price is currently. Mm -hmm. And it can provide me from there like continuations or reversals. At the end, market structure for me is just another word for a form of liquidity at the end. Like every concept same as order blocks like you've seen me now mapping out order blocks but that order block will be also liquidity like mm -hmm. you can see it here so this kind of order block if you qualify it as a true one or not that's a different question but basically people are looking from here to taking shorts or they did took it from here and they expect the price to go down lower what you should know in this particular case is that here at this level of liquidity it will reverse and price will give you a lower time frame exactly the confirmations so if we have a look right now here i also use like asia asia session to understand like where there is liquidity and that's mm -hmm. also a kind of funny thing same with asia session many say it's liquidity many say it's not liquidity 
Uh, you see here in this example how the high was liquidity, but the low was not liquidity. And that's, yeah. again, you need to know when it's liquidity and when it's not mm -hmm. liquidity. So, for instance, Frankfurt at that day, just push price up higher. You see where a classic reaction here from an order block pushed from here all the way to the upside into the one order block, give you there a reversal. Very often you see price really giving you this bullishness because that way many people, of course, believe it's going to go up. And that's that's why all also like the, the beginners are getting confused because they identify here an uptrend. Here you could like, for instance, interpret it as that's a trend line break and it's going down lower. So you see how all these things sometimes like come exactly yeah. across. From my point of view, like not really the reasons why price moves that way. So I just try to figure it out exactly why price is here moving down lower. For instance, you SMC traders would say, hey, that's a break of structure. That's exactly what price uh, will go down lower. For me, it's like just understanding the price is here getting bearish, following bearish order flow. Also, like you could get here into new trade when price taps into this. What you should just know is, like I just mentioned, you should know that price will reverse. So for me, like I would not even go into this dip here to to buy, like like to sell it till till the P. I would be just out here. So nice trade example from that day was me taking on the m1 time frame the short from here using around five pips that's what i usually do i was not a fan of like like taking two crazy tight stop losses i rather take a 10 pip stop loss instead of a two pip stop loss it has nothing to do like i have doubts in my strategy or something like that but sometimes you just need to give it a space same like for instance for me i like believe hey maybe price will reverse already from here you see here based on the price action that that is not the case you realize it pretty fast that what price is going to go for is balance something there to grab the liquidity from here and then to reverse okay it's just then in this case it's not the best uh session time also for me like i'm not trading usually this this hour here because it's like getting into new york Normally mm -hmm. the more is done, but you can also like, what is quite helpful, I would say is like, you understand this is Asia. You understand that Frankfurt is pushing price up higher, same as London. And then it's like reversing this whole provided liquidity. So they're mm -hmm. like just going up higher to, to, to do something here, right? They're, they're mm -hmm. doing it. This is everything made for purpose for the algo, for the algo, they wanted to ensure higher prices. So mm -hmm. how can you ensure higher prices? First, you increase prices, for instance, in this case, because it's an order block. They attract automatic systems. So at the end, you need to view it from that perspective. Like everything's psychologic because people get into trades because of reasons. They have reasons, confirmations. That is the liquidity at the end. Same with any AI bots systems that there are out there. Everything is just like programmed. Same like mm -hmm. with the central bank algo, it's programmed. So they all have different uh, targets that they need to go for and different reasons why they execute. And, but I think also like, because we talked so much, so much about ICT uh, and I totally believe in-, in That's this. ICT. <laughs> <laughs> Let me like, tell you, yeah, that's ICT. Yeah, yeah. Pretty much like <laughs> yeah, yeah, everything yeah. So, like, that you explain it. Yeah, sure. So it, it, it must be, it must be ICT. Like, of course, maybe- a few versions can be a little bit different differently mm. to understand like when price is ready to go down lower, how to view like in general the liquidity. I just know that he's using some times, which I don't agree on that on them. They happen sometimes, sometimes not. Depends at the end how you want to mix it up. So yeah, looks like ICT definitely because it's like looking for for this for this way. I just mm. want to say that it's not SMC because I don't want to like getting like I don't know SMC for me is like I understand your point. <laughs> yeah, it's a very simple approach to the market, but not really understanding what's really going on. Yeah, to the, yeah. And we also don't know 100% everything, but you just get a bad idea of, of understanding. How it works. This was the reason actually for me, uh, I started as well with SMC. And this was the reason why I went, I was still like looking for something that is going to make sense. And they, they, that's how I came across uh, ICT. The understanding is very important in my opinion as well. But let's talk a little bit. What was the most memorable trading moment that 
that you have had in your journey. <laughs> there were many, right? <laughs> but something that I like, that like really stays in your memory. What is the first thing that you're thinking of? Like the biggest memory that you have from trading? Yeah, I would say I have, I have like probably two memories. Like the first mm -hmm. one was that one super negative. Like I, I shorted EURUSD. That time EURUSD was like a crazy short. So it was in, 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 a, in a downtrend mm -hmm. triangle. Blah, blah blah at that time i just shorted it because it, it it seemed logical at that time what price did is like i i used too much lot test but it went up higher continued to go higher i i i added positions for short for short and then i got stopped out whole margin call and then this thing dropped so it dropped like 300 pips 400 pips something like that and that was like what i was aiming for at that time and yeah that's still like in my head because it was so <laughs> I don't know, it was just risk management, which was totally wrong. And yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was a crazy experience. And what about the good one? Yeah, good ones actually just like, I would say it's like n not a specific trade itself. It was like probably like like uh, a week or so where like everything felt like magic. So yeah, just touching the market and everything goes straight. Blowing. Mm. Yeah, blowing everything. So it's that's kind of the feeling. <laughs> it's, the, it's the good flow zone. <laughs> yeah, it's a good flow zone. Yeah. Um, if you're about to start now with all the experience and knowledge that you have, what would you tell to yourself? Yeah, actually, if I'm honest, just getting in touch with some ICT type of strategies. It is what it is. So like, of course, I think to some degree, it's important to like go through this path that I went. It's experience that support resistance can blame you sometimes or supply demand and so on. But I just, it did took me just from my point of view too much time. So I spent too much time trading retail until mm -hmm. I got into the SMC kind of stuff. And mm -hmm. from the SMC stuff, it went faster into liquidity inducements and then into some ICT concepts. Mm -hmm. So I spent, I think, around two years just with normal retail things. And that that's something which I would totally change because that should be just maybe three months of your journey from my point of view or, or six months. And then you should go straight to SMC, liquidity mm -hmm. and just in one and a half year to two years you should figure it out how it works uh what is the plan moving forward what are your plans and goals with trading and maybe with uh, some other stuff that you're planning yeah just if i manage just to continue to improve myself so like reflecting everything getting better that i have like less negativity in my trading journey that i be in the flow the whole yeah. time yeah get to know how to get in the flow state uh faster if you're like like not in it mm -hmm. and yeah at the end like just staying consistent it is what mm -hmm. it is never giving up and that's the plan nothing should change <laughs> yeah yeah amazing any last words that you would like to share with us actually just like, like i mentioned i think that everybody no matter where you are right now in your path you should just keep going that's like really the biggest game changer it's crazy if you like have a look on how less people are like successful in something and mm -hmm. those ones who are successful are only successful because they were nev never giving up. And that's like really key. I think that's mm -hmm. key. And that's what everybody should always mention. No matter how hard it is right now for you, just keep on going. You will see that you will automatically, if you are in this path of trading, for instance, or no matter what you're doing, you will attract the necessary things anyway, because you are in this bubble, you will attract it. You just need to go and find, of course, you should look for, you should be always like, when you hear something, go and give it a check. Not just ignore mm -hmm. things and say, no, you're already the best. Go and try always to get on the next level. I totally agree with you. And have the clear vision that is going to be your driver. Uh, thank you so much for your time, for sharing your experience with us. It's been a pleasure to have you here. I believe the audience is going to get uh, so many takeaways from this interview. Hopefully, we're going to have a follow-up interview in the near future to check on your progress again. 100%. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks to you too. And to all of you watching, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and show us some love in the comments down below. Trade safe and until next time.